Well, hello everyone! Welcome to another Wednesday Day. This time on Wednesday Day, we're looking at Mad Max. Now, Mad Max is a 1988 arcade action game. As you can see here, it's a side-scrolling shooter. Um, just for a heads up, the attract mode here normally has no audio. So if you're hearing music or something right now, that's because I took the time to plug it in. Now, Mag Max was originally an arcade title, and it was released in 85 by Nihon Busan. And apparently, the game was so popular that it got ported to several other systems at the time, such as the Commodore and the Spectrum. But the version we're playing here for the NES, we get released in 88, and the uh, US version, the Nintendo version, uh, had FCI Pony Cannon uh, acting as publisher. You know, the same company that did all those D&D games that we played. Now, Mad Mag Max, simple, idea, simple game, simple idea. Aliens have invaded. The people of Earth have made a giant robot to help them fight off the aliens who have left behind a evil supercomputer looking to control the planet called Babylon. And we're going to take our Mag Max robot and defeat them. So let's press start. And let's go. We got two lives. Now I don't know if there's any formal names for these parts of the ship, but the ship we're playing right now is sort of like the the robot's midsection. Sort of like it's um it's it's hips, I guess. So the stage is auto-scrolling forward. Both A and B shoot, and there's our first power-up. That's sort of like the top half of the robot. It's torso and it's head. And now our firepower is improved. I believe if we take a hit, we'll uh, lose that part of the robot. So now we got, like, a beam weapon it has. And I believe there's four parts to the robot. We don't necessarily collect them in order. Uh, you see, we got hit and we lost all our power-ups. Then we got hit and we died. So I am using auto-fire, that makes life a little easier for me. <laughs> Not that much, considering I just got shot again. I only got one Mag Max. I keep wanting to say Mad Max. <laughs> we got one Mag Max left. Alright, now you see that gray there? That takes us to the underworld. Now we have more of a side-scrolling instead of a kind of three-and-a-half-time isometrics view. I believe we can still get robot power-ups down here. Yep. There's our top half. Uh, didn't last very long. And see, there's our bottom half. <laughs> so now we're, now we're just a pair of legs, walking around like it's Thursday afternoon. And we don't have to stay down here. There's the legs again. Can't get them because we already have them. So I was going to say, we don't have to stay down here. There are uh, exit exits back to the surface. Okay, there's our, our torso and our head. And there's our beam weapon. Alright, let's go back up here. So our Mag Max is fully assembled. Our Voltron robot is ready to go and destroy things. It also seems like it's destroying some stuff that we could not destroy before. So this... this does technically have a boss monster. I've only ever encountered it underground. So the next time we get a chance to go underground, we will go under there and see if we can encounter it. We don't even get extra points if we get the other power-ups. So one of the, uh, the only really big issue I see with being uh, uh, fully formed as Mag Max is we become a bigger target. We can take additional hits, but 
or easier to hit as a result. Went right there. Not exactly the best music, is it? I mean, it's really not that bad, it's just... I think the, the limitations of the NES uh, sound is a little difficult for it to work with. Ah, uh, we lost our legs. We're about to get them back. Enemies do seem more aggressive down here. But the shooting is more straightforward, so I think that makes it, uh, if not easier, just uh, a little more approachable. And that's it, we ran out of life. No, we didn't. I at the very least want to be able to show off the boss enemy. A, it's a pretty cool design. You can kind of see it on the cover if you look over to the left and right. Now, there, now, that I don't remember. That looks like we can go even deeper underground. Okay. Let's get ourselves all powered up. Mag Max one more time. Alright, down we go. Alright, we got our legs. Now we just need to get our energy weapon. Okay, we are fully powered. And these are the, the bane of my existence, these Hulk robots. Now, you see in other games, you know, if you ran into these power-ups again, They'd be, um, you know, like bonus points or something. Alright, we're gonna hit this, see if it takes us even... Nope, it brings us back up. Like, for whatever reason, I thought it was gonna bring us, like, deeper onto the planet. Oh, there go our legs. Yeah, those, like, bird robots are the ones that give me the hardest time. It almost sounds like Looney Tunes music. Ah, flew 
right into that one. So to the best of my knowledge, the game just loops this way for eternity. I don't think the stages really change all that much. Like, now we're on the surface, like, now it's just all dirt. There's no grass, there's no fields. Alright, we got our legs. And, <laughs> back on the ground. This is very much in the spirit of, you know, most shoot 'em ups. Like, this isn't really all that different than, say, Gradius or R type, except maybe in, you know, a little bit in presentation. Because in those games, you know, you get power ups for your ship, you get extra guns or options or little, like, little wingmen and stuff like this. This one, you're building your, your robot as you're going along. I really feel like this thing was a toy. Maybe not here in the States. Like, I kind of see this being, like, something alongside Rob the Robot. Which was, like, another little Nintendo uh, piece of para paraphernalia. There wasn't a lot to use Rob for. Although, now that I think about it, um, Rob was kind of like, I guess, like an early amiibo. Or, you know, similar things like that. You get the little uh, action figure that attaches to your game. And the game plays a little different, or you get a little power-up or something to go along with it. That could have been neat for this. Get your little Magmax. And play, play it alongside your game. Maybe if you collect the different parts uh, in the game, they light up when you're playing them. They light up on the physical fig figure. You know, like maybe there's lights in the head that light up when you get the, uh, the body attachment. Or I keep calling it an energy weapon, whatever the Magmax is carrying. Maybe that starts flashing when you collect it in the game. I don't know if you want to go, like, full uh, duck hunt with it and, like, hold it and point it at your screen. But maybe. I mean, people have played other games with, like, Guitar Hero's guitar or drums. So, uh, you know, it might be cute watching somebody try to play, like, Dragon Warrior with their, uh, their Toy Magmax. Alright, there we go. There's our boss. There's Babylon. Like this badass three-headed cyber dragon. So, I've seen some people compare it to Mecha King Ghidra, but... 85 would have probably been about eight years before we would see, before Japan would see Mechagidra. Forget the U.S. seeing Mechagidra. Although th there have been plenty of other, like, robotic dragon and dinosaur type things before Mechagidra, so. But I believe that's it. The game just keeps looping. And I think that's a good, uh, a good note to end the game on. We got to see the boss of the game. We destroyed Babylon. We technically saved the human race. Oh, and there, there, look, we get to fight it again. So let's try to beat it. Oh, nope. All right, game over. 
We got destroyed. We didn't save the human race. Babylon destroyed us. Alright, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next game. Take care.